Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another video. My name is Sarthin and uh, I play EverQuest on an EQM related server called the Easy Server. This is an um, EverQuest server with custom content so um, and it's a boxing server as well uh, so I'm not gonna make a huge introduction to the server now but I'll say this much this is a super awesome server and it's been around since 2008 and it has tons of custom content so um, if you haven't checked this out yet, uh, uh, just check uh, the links in the, des the description of the video and, uh, and come say hello. Um, today's video is going to be a guide for um, the high level uh, Halloween zone that we have going um, uh, on Easy Server during most, I'd say most Norwegian, I mean most American holidays. Uh, we got this Halloween zone going. Well, we do have actually two Halloween zones going. One uh, lower tier and one upper tier Halloween zone. And they both, uh, and especially the higher tier one, has been hugely popular during the, the last five, six years here on the EC server. Uh, just moving down here in Nexus to Mr. Halloween. Uh, this will be the NPC that you will talk to if you are lower level and want to... Um, Check out the lower level uh, Halloween zone or expedition as it actually is. Uh, but if you are high enough level, and by high enough level I mean level 79 is what I recommend. I recommend you've done tier 10 before you, uh, before you try and do too much in, in the Hills of Shade, which is the zone that is the upper tier Halloween zone. Uh, because the mobs in there are like level 79 plus and the bosses are even higher and uh, uh, they hit really hard so uh, yeah it is basically a top tier um, Halloween zone and um, like I said it's also been hugely popular so um, this will not be a video for for any one of you who has already done this a countless of times this is what I'm trying to make here is just uh, like a teaser or a guide uh, showing off the zone to newer players or uh, those that may be in a situation where they will soon, maybe maybe next time the event is open, they will be ready to enter the zone and maybe want to have a quick view on what it's all about. So I'll try and explain uh, as much as possible, uh, as quickly as possible. And we'll see if we can also get some uh, some bosses to spawn as well. Uh, so uh, first of all, um, you have to move to Nexus. Nexus is where you'll access the Hills of Shade Halloween Zone. So as you can see here right next to me, uh, there is a, a portal here. So uh, once I move close enough to the portal, it'll teleport me to another zone. Uh, so uh, when you are making yourself ready for Entering this uh, Halloween zone, uh, make sure that you have uh, raided up with your characters and uh, then you can basically just have your characters stick to your main uh, tank and uh, and once my, the main tank moves close enough to the portal over here, uh, they will all, they should all get teleported to, to the next zone where uh, they can move on to start the Halloween uh, zone. So let's do that first. Um, I'm just gonna use my. Uh, I'm just gonna use Sarthin for this uh, video. Um, well, at least until I. Yeah, uh, I think I'm just gonna use him. So let's move over here, and uh, once I get close, you can see I get teleported back to uh, a new zone called the Void. And uh, once we get in here, you'll see uh, an NPC over here called Jox. Um, and before you can enter the Halloween zone you have to talk to this uh, character over here and um, once you follow his dialogue um, you will then be able to purchase uh, let me see if I think I have it on here uh, yeah there we have it uh, so you'll be able to purchase the Hills of Shade gateway device see the value down here is 7 million plat uh, if you do have enough uh, platinum on you as a person you um, um, there will be you I think if I'm not mistaken you will be able to buy the device for your entire group so it should be enough say that you are running two maybe three groups it should be enough that one player has has enough platinum to cover uh, the cost for uh, all the characters to buy the device 
Okay, so we have a so we have someone loving the camera over here. <laughs> it's Mope. Hello Mope. <laughs> um so yeah, so once you've bought uh, the device here uh, for your characters, then you'll be able to uh, move into the Halloween zone. And uh, I'm just going to bring up the HUD here so we can see. Um, once you click on public realms here and hail it, uh, you will see uh, 15 public realms uh, showing up here. And you can also see how many players are in each, uh, each um, realm. And um, uh, there are 15 of them, so it usually 15 is usually during crowded hours. Uh, uh, it can be quite full in all these realms. Right now, um, for the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna just gonna pick one of the um, one of the empty ones, like realm 14 here. Uh, you can either click on the text here to enter the zone, uh, or you can just type enter realm 14. Uh, you have to do this for all your characters. Uh, if I bring my raid over here and I click, uh, like, if I click here, Enter Realm 14, it will just teleport uh, the main character in there. So, so what you need to do is is do a BCAA and slash say, and and they will uh, all your characters will have to target uh, public realms before you can enter. So. Uh, target this uh, public realms and then you can do a BCAA and the say enter realm 14. So once you do that, uh, you will enter Hills of Shade, which is the Halloween zone. All right. So um, so once you get get into the realm, uh, the first thing you want to do is go over to Jax here and uh, make sure that you pick up his uh, his quest uh, called Plane of Re Regret, the Keystones. I have already done it, but I can show you how it looks down here. So uh, the object objectives is to uh, are to to find some uh, various keystones, which will be dropping off certain bosses in the zone, and uh, and activate some shrines that you'll need to find. And in the end, you'll be uh, given a chance to um, to defeat the end boss in the zone called Megorian World Devour. Um, so make sure you pick up that quest and then move on to to Lena Schultz here, the Bruna Neckguard, which actually um, is actually named after uh, a player that played on on the server for many years ago, who sadly passed for some years ago. Uh, so that's a nice gesture, uh, and the necklace is super nice as well. Um, I would obviously put it on my main tank first because of the hit point gains and uh, added survivability. But after that, I recommend using it for your casters because of the uh, improved damage focus effect. So your casters will definitely, you will notice that you're, you, you'll be nuking uh, for more damage uh, if you have these on, uh, this on your casters. So, so you can make a note of that. Uh, there's also a master weaponsmith here who has some weapon quests for bow, dagger, sword and stuff. And... Um, while the weapons themselves are quite interesting, um, the downside is that let me just uh, grab it here. The downside is if you look at the uh, the paladin, the shed knight, and the bard the weapon here, you can see that it has the lore group for ultimate weapons. So um, it you you won't be able to uh, to use these if you are planning on making your ultimate weapon, which you should be doing uh, eventually, but but up until you uh, have enough materials to make your ultimate weapons, these will be pretty nice uh, substitutes. So, so uh, I guess it's up to you if you feel like uh, it's worth it. Um, as you can see here, uh, you'll have to find some various uh, different loot from the zone here, uh, most of which drops off the tier two or three bosses in the zone. Uh, so more on how the bosses work in a little bit though. Um, so moving on, uh, we have Rathor over here. Uh, Rathor, he uh, accepts AA crystals. Mm, I have a few in my inventory here. I can just show them real quick. Um, so as you can see here, uh, we have two different uh, crystals. One is for 20,000 AA experience. And one is for 50,000. 
and um, while you're killing uh, mobs in the zone here, uh, some of the mobs uh, and specifically the bosses will um, will uh, have a chance to drop these crystals. So just make sure that you stack them up on whichever character you want um, your AAs on the most, and uh, and just hand them to the NPC here uh, to gain some AA experience points. Uh, just make sure that you <laughs> that you spend these crystals before the event is over, or else you'll just have to they'll have to collect dust in your bank until until the next event is up. So make sure you hand them in before the event stops. Um, then we'll have another quest NPC here, which uh, <laughs> is uh, is uh, has been frustrating for for many players here, um, and that is Foxy Fox the Shady Gambler. Um, let me just hail her first here. So, um, Foxy Fox, she will uh, give you the opportunity to get some really nice augments that you can sog it into your weapons. Uh, this, uh, I was planning on finding the augment. So, uh, let me just see if I can find my, my one of my augments here. Uh, this is the top augment, the ultimate augment. And as you can see, it adds 500,000 hit points. And a lot of heroic resists here. So this is definitely uh, some really nice augments. Um, and uh, the, I'll just try and explain real quick how, how this all works. So uh, when you're killing the mobs in the zone, uh, they will have a chance, uh, most likely, they will drop these gambling coins. Um, and there's also, let me just jump real quick out to the wiki here. Wiki is, let's see, this is, no, this is where I wanted to go. Um, so the mobs in the zone can also drop the rusted augment and, and this one, the fox's rusted augment, uh, is, uh, is an augment that you will need to start uh, interacting and gambling with, uh, with the foxy fox. So once you have this uh, rusted augment, uh, and you have collected some foxy gambling coins here. Uh, you can just hail her and you get the option that you can gamble your coins. And if you do so, there is a small chance that you will get a new augment from her. So this is the rank 2 one. 60k hit points, then you'll have 100k hit points. Uh, and they'll increase and get better and better uh, up until... Uh, superior is the next best, and then the the ultimate armor, uh, ultimate augment that I showed you would be uh, the top augment that you will get from her. Uh, so um, it's up to you how you want to go ahead and do this. I know some people try to save up a few coins and then gamble, and some just you know gamble to her every run. So it is based on luck, and um, and uh, once you. <laughs> Once you've been unlucky many enough times, then perhaps you you will get your augments upgraded and get a new one. So uh, so that is uh, how, that is what this um, NPC is for. Um, so I think that covers the the basics for the the NPCs in the zone in here. Uh, you also have the option to switch realms uh, by targeting the public realms here and hailing it. Uh, and as I sh uh, showed you earlier, you can either just click on an empty realm or just type enter realm and the number that you want to teleport to, to get uh, to switch instance. Alright, so we have now completed the quick introduction to the important, uh, the most important NPCs in the zone in and what they do. Uh, so let's move on to how the zone works, uh, how it's built up the mechanisms. So, um, the zone consists of uh, quite a few different and <laughs> both scary and funny uh, mob types, NPC types. And uh, some of them are just uh, uh, what you would call uh, random trash mobs. Like, they would drop, they will drop these coins that you can use to gamble for higher augments. Uh, they will also drop uh, double loot, triple loot... Um, and zone pool spears, uh, amongst yeah, and the essences and yeah, actually a lot of different good stuff they can drop in here. Uh, you can get all the various essences you need and uh, superior light stones. 
So it is a really nice place to, to get a lot of um, resources to, to grow stronger. Um, but um, there will be certain mob types in here that has a chance to spawn bosses. And not all the mob types in here have that chance. Like you can see the fingers here. They are just like trash uh, spawns. So they will drop some good loot, but they will not have a chance to spawn any bosses. Uh, but if we move over to the Zorth camp, which is over here, um, down in these caves you will have the minions of Zorth. Uh, and these mobs, they will definitely have a chance to spawn bosses. Uh, but um, quite rarely though. So let's just move down here real quick so you can see down here. We have the minions of Zorth. And uh, if you kill enough of these... Uh, they will have a chance to spawn a boss. And we have three different kind of bosses. Uh, if you don't count the end, end boss, end zone boss, we have three different kinds of bosses here. Uh, we have tier 1, tier 2, and tier 3 bosses. And they are chain spawns. So if I go down in the tunnel here and kill a bunch of these uh, minions of Zorth, uh, at some point uh, I will get a tier 1 boss to spawn. And uh, upon killing that tier 1 boss, I have a small chance of, uh, of that boss chaining into uh, the tier 2 boss. So you will get a tier 2 boss spawn. And, um, and then a slightly, a very small chance actually, to get the tier 3 boss to spawn once you've killed the tier 2 boss. Uh, so let's just move over here and I can show you uh, how that actually works uh, by with the boss chains here. So... Let's have a, a quick look at that with some help, maybe. <laughs> so, as you can see right now, I'm fighting the minion of Zorth. And uh, if you kill enough of these, you will have a chance. Uh, they will, upon killing them, they will spawn uh, another uh, a, a boss. Uh, uh, so, it'll start with a tier 1 boss. And if you're lucky, it's going to chain up to a tier 2 boss. And um, then tier t uh, 3 in the end eventually if <laughs> if you kill enough times so uh, as so, so we can see here uh, upon killing this minion of Zorth with with some help or or luck <laughs> you figure it out yourself uh, then we spawned a Zorth here so uh, let me just start by killing him now this is the tier 1 boss um, and uh, upon killing him uh, you will then have a chance to spawn the tier 2 like I said and then so these kind of chain. So um, you will also they will also give a shout and a, and a shake uh, once you uh, once you do this uh, and once they spawn. So so okay, let's just uh, kill this now and uh, and see if we're lucky enough to to get an, <laughs> to get another uh, chain boss of this one here. So let's see here. Oh, it goes down slow with a one hander. Oh, so there we go. So this is the tier 2 boss. It's the unicorn <laughs> master of the pep. So um, this is the tier 2 boss. Ancient stone wall has Ooh, maybe faded. I should add some, uh, maybe I should Warrior's add some defense defensive buffs here so I don't end up dying and messing up the shot here. Uh, okay, so this is the tier 2 boss. And upon killing him, uh, you will then have a chance to spawn the tier, uh, tier 3 boss. Uh, the tier 3 boss will not spawn uh, right on top of you like like the tier 1 and the tier 2 bosses do. Uh, the tier 3 bosses, they have uh, their own locations um, around the zone. Uh, it is a set location, but it's different for all the tier 3 uh, bosses. So upon killing the tier 3 bosses, you'll have a chance to, uh, to get some, uh, some um, very nice armor as well as uh, the keystones that you then need to to spawn uh, Magoria in the world of ours which is um, which is the last um, boss in the zone so you can see the shout down here Magorian's monstrous creation shouts and that is the sign that um, the uh, tier 3 boss has spawned uh, so I am really lucky today <laughs> um, uh, so all jokes aside, um, I obviously had some help just to showcase this. 
just uh, don't expect to come in here and kill a sword or two and uh, and get this uh, one, two, three chain going with the bosses. Um, so uh, it's going to take a long time uh, uh, and a lot of work. Uh, but it's really it's super exciting to to fight each, these chains and chains and just crossing fingers for another for another spawn. So uh, so yeah, let's just. Uh, as you can see here on my map now, inside these tunnels here, we have Magorian's monstrous creation. So let's just move, uh, we can just, I, I guess we can preview the, the loot here as well. Because, uh, as you can see here, is a fork. So these tier 1 and tier 2, two bosses, they have a chance to, to drop the, the items that you need for the quests, the weapon quests and stuff that I, that I showed you uh, in the entrance as well as a lot. Usually, um, quite a bit more coins uh, than the regular mobs. So, um, all right. So let's just move in here. See uh, if we. Uh, maybe I should just throw on some buffs here first, so I don't end up dying. And let's move in here and uh, and uh, find our way down to um, down to the tier three boss that spawned off the chain here. So there we have him, Magorian's monstrous creation down here. So it looks kind of cool. Okay, so let's kill this one here, and and I'll show you what he drops afterwards. Let me just bring up the HUD here, see if we cannot boost this a bit. There we go. All right, so the third chain uh, boss is down. So let's have a quick look at the loot here. Um, some random quest items for the weapon uh, quests uh, in the entrance. Um, and also, here is the keystone. And uh, this is uh, one of the keystones that you need to, um, to spawn the, the end zone boss called Magorian's uh, something. I cannot... <laughs> Magorian's uh, World Devour, Devour <laughs> is what it's called. So. And he also had some double and triple loot here as well, so that's quite nice. Uh, we did not see any um, any of the zone specific um, uh, items that dropped uh, on this one. Uh, some of these tier three bosses, well, all of them have a chance to to drop some uh, some uh, some loot that you won't find in any other zones. They're quite nice. I don't have any of the tier three boss loots on me right now I don't think but uh, I do have a few from the um, from the end game uh, the end zone boss here so yeah all right so that is the chain uh, going so let's move on all right so um, so having showed you how the chain uh, spawning of the bosses work um, ultimately Ultimately, the best resource uh, will be uh, our uh, wiki page. Uh, it may be a bit awkward to find the the correct. Um, so as you can see on the main wiki page here, you go into Halloween, and then into Hills of Shade here. So basically, what we have here is just about all the information you need um, to figure out the zone and the mechanisms and and what you need for certain quests and how you spawn, uh, well not exactly how you spawn, but uh, you'll see the, the boss, here you can see the boss chain that I just showed you in the video, and, and it'll show what keystone it drops as well. Uh, what it doesn't say is which uh, mob types you'll need to kill to have a chance to spawn these uh, tier 1 bosses. Uh, but um, I don't think that's noted here anyway, it just says killing certain mob types. So, but there are so many helpful players uh, on the server. So, just uh, ask around if you're if you're not sure, and you'll you'll find out <laughs> uh, which uh, which mob types you need to kill to collect all these keystones. Um, so, uh, just remember to use this page, and uh, usually we'll get a heads up when an event is coming with a date. Uh, so, I would recommend reading up on this page. Uh, before the event starts, uh, for sure. <laughs> so uh, let's move back into the game here a bit. Um, 
so I'm not going to run around and show you all the mob types you need to kill to spawn the bosses right now. But um, I didn't get a chance to show you the loot that dropped off the tier 3 bosses. Uh, so here are two of them. We have the Blazing Earring of Planking and the Crude Mantle of Pain. Uh, and uh, they have a, yeah, I'd say quite rare chance of dropping these two items. Uh, yeah, actually quite rare chance of dropping when you kill the tier 3 bosses. But the tier 3 bosses, they will always drop the keystones though that you need to to uh, collect for the quest to spawn the last boss. And, um, and uh, while we are at it, I'm actually... I actually have enough keystones on one of my characters right now to to spawn uh, the end boss. So I will do that now. And uh, so if you don't want <laughs> don't want that part spoiled, uh, this is the time to <laughs> to uh, to stop the video. Um, and uh, and I'll move on and uh, show exactly how you spawn the last boss. And maybe we'll also see some of the loot he has. Alright, so let's move over to the end of the video where we try and spawn the end zone uh, boss here called Mangorian World Devour. And um, wow, two in a row, that is that is not often you see. <laughs> Super lucky. Alright, so um, we're gonna try and spawn Mangorian, so I'm gonna show you how you do that. Uh, so once you have uh, gathered the quest from Jarx here and kill, kill all the um, all the five different tier three bosses and loot the keystones and also the 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 last tier one boss here that drops the shape keystone, uh, then you'll have to activate shrines, uh, and these shrines you'll find uh, at specific spots around the zone, uh, and I will show you in just a bit uh, how to find them and activate them. Um, but there's one thing you should know though, and uh, uh, because there is a cooldown on these shrines. So, so if you have collected all the keystones and you want to spawn him, uh, then uh, make sure that no one else has done it in the past 30 minutes. Because once one player has um, completed this quest and killed uh, Magorian, uh, then you'll have to wait 30 minutes until another player can can do it again to repeat it. So just make sure you uh, are aware of that before you yeah, start. Uh, so my character here, is he in this? Yeah, he's in this and levitated. So I'm going to use this character that has completed the quest. And I'm going to run around the zone and activate the, the, the ancient shrines here. And once I've activated every one of them, uh, the boss will spawn in the middle area here so, and we'll engage him and see how it goes. So um, you don't need to activate these ancient shrines in a specific order. You can just uh, do them as you like. Um, I've always kind of just went this route here so but you can do it whatever route you uh, you want. So I'm just gonna move over here from the zone in and over to the Zorth area. And uh, on top of the Zorth tunnels, you'll see uh, a big statue here. So, uh, moving closer to the statue, um, let me actually just do this. So it's a bit easier for you to see what's going on here. <laughs> I always turn down the, the clip uh, for performance <laughs> reasons for my, my, my boxes. But moving close to this... Um, to this shrine here, you'll see that your heavy keystone starts to glow. And once you push yes here, uh, you will s activate the shrine. So as you can see, I push it here and one is done already. So now I need to find the remaining five shrines. And uh, as you can see here, there's a lot of uh, effects going on here. and. Everybody on the server will will get these shakes when you spawn the endgame boss, and not everybody is particularly <laughs> happy about that. But uh, but yeah, it is what it is, and uh, and yeah. So 
I'm moving on. Let's find the other shrines here. The next one is over here, the big axe. So that's the shaped keystone. It's kind of hard to navigate when, <laughs> when it's shaking like this, but it is kind of crazy. <laughs> Uh, okay, so moving on, let's see if we can find the third one. It's going to be over here. So once you're close enough, just push a yes. And uh, we'll continue straight ahead. Up into the Assassin's Camp, as we call it. And move over here. Uh, some of these shrines are a bit tricky. you got to really hug them to... To be able to activate them so that's the fourth one so there are two keystone uh, two shrines left to activate so moving for the fourth one uh, the fifth I mean it's gonna be over here you can see on the map where I am right now so down here you can see the next one Having levitate on is actually quite nice because I think this is one of the this is one of the shrines that are actually a bit picky with where you are positioned to to be able to activate it. So just make sure you have levitate on and uh, in this, and it should be no problem running around here, even with uh, with a fully spawned zone. And here we have the last one, the last shrine. So moving over there and uh, activate it and we'll move back to our main tank uh, this is server wide emote uh, and these shakes is server wide as well <laughs> so everybody is going to know when someone spawned the end game boss in here so yeah uh, and uh, let me just map hide all these and over here You'll find Megorion. I'll just make him visible here. There we have him. So, you uh, back a while ago, he was actually spawning on a platform in the air, uh, but it was kind of buggy. So, um, so he got moved down, so it's not as majestic spot for him now as it used to be, but um, it's good enough. It's good enough. So let's head over and uh, and uh, kill him and see what he drops for us today. So I'm just going to invis, move over, um, and just make note of the fact that I have a lot of characters going here in the zone right now. And they're all pretty much maxed, so this will be a really trivial fight for me. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it can be a really tough fight. And you, you actually need a lot of DPS to, to, to kill him, because he has high regen. So here we have him. I wonder if he can see my invis. I have actually never tried that before. Let me, let me see. It actually doesn't look like you can see my invis. <laughs> All right, so here we have him at least. And um, so I'm just going to back off a bit. And uh, yeah, he's actually... Yeah. So I'm just going to back off a bit, summon my characters, and, and we'll kill him and see how that looks. So I'm just going to... This quick. All right. So I got my characters in here. Uh, maybe I'll just start by using Sarthin. See how that see how that works. Okay, I'm gonna reveal myself. I'm pretty sure he is rooted to the ground. Yeah, looks like he is rooted to the ground. Yeah. All right. So let's send in the Armada and kill him. So
so yeah it looked kind of easy there but um yeah i'm equipped above this tier level anyway at some point i i was actually i think i spent like five minutes trying to beat down his region so yeah he can be really difficult uh, if you're just breaking into uh, the zone so let's see once you loot him he has i just gotta i think this is lore no it's not so once you loot his shirt which is uh, kind of a pun here formed halloween for days and all i got was this stupid shirt so once you loot the shirt though you'll get pandora's box over here so here we have pandora's box and that's where the 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 loot is so let's see what he has for us this time all right so not the best loot this time but he does have the the mixed lore hardened club so this is actually a really really nice it counts as an ultimate weapon and uh it really is quite nice this effect has a death too which has actually a chance to to insta kill it's a really rare chance but it has a chance to insta kill the proc and insta kill uh, spell that works on it doesn't work on all the end bosses and stuff but it does work on a lot of mobs so sometimes you'll just see this proc and the, the mobs will just uh, melt so it is quite nice i don't need this anymore so i'm gonna gonna call it the quits on the video right now and uh, and i'm gonna see if anybody else on the server needs this uh, online right now uh, and uh, and as always i thank you for watching and uh, and see you next video